Today we're going to learn about logarithmic properties and how to use them. So here are some of the different properties we're going to use. First of all, the product property. If you take the log of xy, then that is the same thing as the log of x plus the log of y assuming all the bases are the same here, okay? If you take the log of x divided by y, that's the same thing as the log of x minus the log of y. And the log of x to a power of p is the same thing as if you take the p out front, we've got p times the log of x. So a power can be brought out front. All of these are equivalent properties. So for example one, if we have the log of 2 times x times y, then we can use um, the product property and say the log of 2 plus the log of x plus the log of y. If we have the log base 2 of 2 times x times y, that would be the same thing with base 2. So log base 2 of 2 plus log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of y. The natural log, okay, same thing as log because it's log base e, right, of 3 times a plus b would be, since we've got a times in here, we'll have the natural log of 3 plus the natural log of a plus b. Now notice the a plus b, you can't do anything with that, okay? There's no property that allows us to separate the natural log or log of two things added, okay? So that has to stay. For example, 2, this time we're dividing, so if you have the log base 7 of z divided by, or excuse, of z divided by 49, then that's log base 7 of z minus the log base 7 of 49. Same thing here, log base 7 of a minus the log base 7 of 14. For this one, we've got log of 100 divided by x plus y. So that would be log of 100 minus the log of all of x plus y. So make sure you put that in parentheses. The log of 100 can be easily simplified. That's just 2. Remember our properties from the last chapter, log base 10 of 10 squared would just be the squared, 2. So 2 minus log of x plus y. And I think we could do that back with part A also, because log base 7, 49 is 7 squared, so log base 7 of 7 squared is 2. So that would work too. I don't think we can do that with 14 because it's 2 times 7. So, on to example 3. The power property, so this 5 can be brought out front so that we have 5 times the natural log of x. Same thing here, 5 times the natural log of e, except the natural log of e is 1. So our simplification, simplifying it all the way, is actually just 5. And for part c, let's write this as just to an exponent, okay? So that would be to the power of 2 thirds. So our two-thirds will go out front times log of x.
Okay, so all these are the next few problems are doing are um, putting a bunch of it together. So I'll we'll separate it one thing at a time, pretty much using order of operations. So we've got log base 3 of 5z divided by w. So we want to separate first the division. So log base 3 of 5z minus log base 3 of w, and I do like to do this one step at a time to make sure I don't miss something, especially if we were um, separating down here, we would have to distribute and all, so be careful. So now we can take the 5z and separate that into log base 3 of 5 plus log base 3 of z minus our log base 3 of w, and that's as far as we can go. For this one, log base 7 of AC minus log base 7 of 5D. And again, one thing at a time to make sure you get it right. So we've got log base 7 of A plus log base 7 of C minus, and we need to put this in parentheses because it's minus all of the log base 7 of 5D, so it's minus all of the log base 7 of 5 plus the log base 7 of D, okay? And then we'll go ahead and rewrite it distributed. And this is why I say do one step at a time, because if you did this at the beginning, you may not recognize that that log base 7 of D here has to be negative also. Okay, with this one, we've got natural log of x squared plus natural log of y. And then we can take that 2 and put it out front with the x squared. So 2 natural log of x plus the natural log of y. And you'll see as we go further why we do this, especially when solving equations. But right now, one step at a time, we're just simplifying. Here's an even bigger one. We've got log, and I'm going to go ahead and take this cubed root of x squared and change it to just an exponent. So log of x to the two-thirds minus, and that's a natural log, of w plus z. Okay? So then we can bring the two-thirds out front, two-thirds natural log of x minus the natural log of w plus z. We can't separate that. Okay, this one's really long. So, first thing we're going to do is change this square root to an exponent. So, we've got log base 2 of 4x over yz cubed to the one-half. I'm going to look and see how much room I've got. Nope. Okay. Got to fit it all on this page. So, first thing we can do now is bring that one-half out front. Okay. And then the one-half, I'm keeping it out front of everything, but it has to stick, so that's why I'm putting the bracket there. And I'm just using the bracket because we're going to be using a lot of parentheses, not to get confused. So we've got log of 4x. Since we're dividing, then we got log of yz cubed. Don't forget to close our bracket. Okay, so up to the top, we've got one. Gosh, this is never going to fit. Jeez. I think I can add a page here. Oh, we'll do our best. So, one half log, and that 4x splits up to be log of 4 plus log, and yeah, I do mean base 2, I'm just not saying that every time, of x minus, put this in the parentheses, log of y plus log of z cubed. Okay, 
So a couple things can happen here. Just bring in this. Oh, first we can change that log base 2 of 4. That's the log base 2 of 2 squared, right? So that's just the squared 2. Plus log of x minus log of y minus, I'm distributing that negative, and then we can bring that 3 out front from the z cubed. So 3 log of z. And now we can just go through and distribute the 1 half. I did get it. So 1 half times 2 is just 1. Then we have plus log, 1 half log base 2 of x minus 1 half log base 2 of y minus, and 1 half times 3 is 3 halves, times log base 2 of z. And that's our answer. Okay, for example 9, let's just start separating this out. Don't look at this and say, oh my gosh, this one's too hard, I can't do it. Once you do one step at a time, it's really not that bad. So we've got log base 8 of 64x squared y minus log base 8 of 3zw cubed. Okay, so starting with this first part, we can start doing some addition. So log base 8 of 64 plus log base 8 of x squared plus log base 8 of y minus, put it in parentheses, so we distribute here in a minute, log base 8 of 3 plus log base 8 of z plus log base 8 of w cubed. Okay, so you probably see some things that we can deal with here. Uh, 64 is 8 squared. Log base 8 of 8 squared is 2. Oh, back up. We can take that x squared and bring the 2 out front. So 2 log base 8 of x, bring down the log base 8 of y, and distribute our negatives, so log base 8 of 3 minus log base 8 of z minus, bring this 3 in the exponent out front, so 3 log base 8 of w. So as yucky as that looked to begin with, it really wasn't all that bad. Okay, now we're just going to go backwards. So we can take subtraction and put it back into a single logarithm. Believe me, once we are solving equations, you'll see the purpose for this. So this would be the same as log of 4x minus 3 over or divided by x. We just changed the subtraction into division and put it into one log. Here, we're adding. Make sure you double check that your, your bases are the same because if your bases aren't the same, you can't combine them. So the first thing what I'm going to do here is take this 4 and put it on the exponent. So log base 2 of y to the fourth power. And then since we're adding, then this is log base 2 of z times y to the fourth. Make sure you use the parentheses, because if you write it like this, then it almost looks like log base 2 of z times y to the fourth. Actually, it does look like that, okay? We don't really know if you don't use the parentheses that it's not included. So please do be sure and use the parentheses when you're multiplying, and they're both part of the log, okay? 
So for this one, first we can take that 3 and put it on the x. So natural log of x cubed plus natural log of x minus 2 minus the natural log of 5. And we'll do things in order here, okay? Left or right, just like order of operations. So we'll take care of this addition first. Do one thing at a time. So natural log of x cubed times x minus 2. Remember, there's not anything we can do with that x minus 2 in there. And then minus natural log of 5. And then since we're subtracting, we can change that to the, the log of division. You can distribute this x cubed or not. That's entirely up to you. So we end up with the natural log of x cubed times x minus 2 over 5, divided by 5. Oh, and that's where I didn't need an extra page. Okay. For example, 13. I've got an extra page with this one. Yay. Okay. So, first thing we need to do. We need to distribute the 2. So, 2 times the natural log of x minus 2 times the natural log of x squared. And, yeah, there's parentheses on it here. You don't really have to put it in parentheses. It's up to you. Um... I usually don't because if there's a squared there, we know it's attached to the x, okay? Then we got plus our two-thirds natural log of z to the ninth minus natural log of z. Okay, so now we're going to take these twos and put them as our exponent, and also the two-third over there. So we've got natural log of x squared minus, and this would be natural log of x squared squared. So remember, when you square square, you're multiplying the exponents. So it's natural log of x to the two times two, which is natural log of x to the fourth. Then we'll do natural log of z to the two-thirds times nine. That's just six. Okay. And so let's see. Now we can, we've got some subtraction here. So we'll divide natural log of x squared divided by, let me write it like this. Why don't I use parentheses? Because if you're dividing, it's obviously it's trash. But you, again, you can if you want to. Then plus natural log of z to the 6 minus natural log of z. Now, why didn't I go ahead and do the subtraction um, with the z to the 6 and the z? and change that to division because order of operation says I have to add first because it's going left to right. So what we have to do is the natural log of x squared over x to the fourth times z to the sixth. That would be x squared times z to the sixth over x to the fourth. And don't worry, we'll take care of the um, canceling out here in a second. And then minus natural log of z. So, I'm going to grab this, take it over to the next page, maybe. Okay. Now we can take care of the Z. So, realize if we, I'm just going to go out to the side, you don't have to write this down, you don't want to. If we do that divided by z, then that's the same thing as, if that's divided by z over 1, that's the same thing as times 1 over z, right? So that z is going to go on the bottom with the x to the 4th. So we have natural log of 
x squared z to the 6th over x to the 4th z. And now we can subtract, or we can cancel out some things. So the x squared goes away, and on the bottom it becomes a 2. And then the z on the bottom goes away, and on the top it becomes a 5. So we've got, finally, natural log of z to the 5th over x squared. Just do be careful. Notice how I put the division kind of in the middle of the natural log. If you write it like this, then I could get confused that you mean um, the x squared to be under the natural log. So just be careful, very careful when you're writing these. Uh, I think I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me in advance. Maybe not. We'll see. Okay, example 14, same type deal. So, we're going to first, let's see, what am I going to do with that minus? Okay, I see what I did. So, take the 2 and put it on, on the exponent. So, we've got negative log base 5 of x plus 5 squared. Then plus log base 5 of x plus log base 5 of x squared minus 25. Which, let's go ahead and do something with that while we're here. x squared minus 25 is the same as x plus 5 times x minus 5. Make sure all of that is included in the log base 5 there, okay? Okay, so now... Backing up, this is the same thing as log of x minus, this log of x, minus log of x plus 5 squared, right? So if that's the case, then we have the log of x divided by x plus 5 squared. And I could have rewritten that around, but hopefully you see what I did there. And then we've got this still tagging out at the end. So that's plus log base 5 of x plus 5 times x minus 5. Okay, so next step. Since we've got addition, then we're going to be multiplying. So we've got log of x times x plus 5 times x minus 5 over, and I'm going to go ahead and write out this x plus 5 squared as x plus 5 times x plus 5. So you'll see what I'm going to do with that. So do you see what I did there? I took this and multiplied by that. And when we did that, the x plus 5 times x minus 5 ended up on the top. So we can cancel out some x plus 5s. And we end up with, finally, log base 5 of x times x minus 5 divided by x plus 5. Okay, just a few more. Approximate these. So you want to be able to use your calculator. The only problem is you can't put log base B into your calculator, right? But they've told us what log base B of 2 is. 
They've told us what log base B of 3 is, and they've told us what log base B of 7 is. So what we can do is we can say log base B of 21 is the same thing as log base B of 3 times 7, right? And if we separate that, log base B of 3 plus log base B of 7, now we can substitute in. So log base B of 3, we see up there, is 0.6826. And log base B of 7 was 1.2, ah, 1.20, jeez. Keeps miss I keep touching the bottom and it makes it go forward. And then we just add. So that's 1.8917. Okay, so let's try that with this one. So log base B of 9, that's the same thing as log base B of 3 squared. We can put the 2 out front, log base... 2 times the log base B of 3, and the log base B of 3 is 0.6826, so it's 2 times 0.6826 gives us 1.3652. And then for this one, that would be the log base B of 7 minus the log base B of 2, and we have those. So 1.2091 minus 0 0.4304. Subtract those and we get 0.7784. And then the last property we need to look at is called the change of base property. And it's very, very useful. If you've got log base B of X... You can say the log of x over the log of b with any base you choose. So this makes it useful for calculator. So if you, um, you'll, you'll see here in the examples, it, it really helps us out. You can also do the same thing with natural log. If you've got log base b of x, you can say natural log of x over natural log of b or log of x over log of b, okay? Just make sure that the base, the b part, is on the bottom. So for this one, it would be the log of 15 over the log of 7. And we can put base 10s in our calculator so that we can figure this out. Just, just put in log of 15 divided by log of 7, and it'll give us approximately 1.3917. And then last one, log of five, log base 5 of 0.3. Let's use natural log this time. Really doesn't matter. Natural log of 0.3 divided by the natural log of 5. Put that in your calculator and you get negative 0.7481. And that concludes lesson 3.4.